Uh. All right. Let's first go over what we see. Here. I see a large beard. He looking upwards. Some hair. You know, this looked pretty suspicious. <gasps> Taliban leader Muhammad. Muhammad Omar's dead. He died of the uh, disease. 2013. Uh, uh, he bipolar. It's a damn thing. Um, because he sees Tara's godfather right here. Right now. He thinks it's Osama Bin Laden. And he starts dancing in Kabul. In the presidential palace. I'm sorry. Because this is not your guy. <laughs> this is actually one of the greatest scientists of all time. Maxwell. James Clerk Maxwell. I think he's a bit better than your terrorist god. So there were three types of integrals. First one is the uh, the normy integral. Ugh, everybody uses this integral. So normy, so trendy. Ugh. But anyway, then you have the volume integral. And this may look like we have just been saved from the normie integral, but then we see a horrific sight. Three normie integrals at one! The surface integral, which hopefully doesn't have any semblance of the normie integral in its opposite form. Phew! <gasps> no semblance of the normie integral because we put an onion ring on it. All right, if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so trendy. Ugh. But anyway, this normie integral, it's also called the area integral. Phew, no more semblance of the normie integral. All right, we're good. So, what does the area integral have to do? Well, basically, let's say that we have a graph. That is x squared. You should know what a parabola is if you're trying to watch Maxwell equations. So let's say you have f of x equals x squared. And you want to find what is the area under this curve. Well, you could try something like, I don't know, the Riemann sum. But that's not approximate. But the thing is, that even though there's dl that can be approximately approximated as a triangle, as they get more precise, that means the rectangles get skinnier, and so you, it's even more viable to put a ring on it if you like it. <laughs> so, as they get thinner, then the graph gets more accurate. And so, that's called integration over some period. And this little change uh, in thickness between one to the next if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. It's dx. And eventually, dx becomes extremely small. So, just like 8, this appears into nothingness as soon as you finish everything. So, anyway, that's assembled into an integral. And let's say that we want to find the area under the curve from 0 to 5. Hmm. All right. So, obviously, you're not going to do this normally, because this isn't just like a circle shape, even though I've drawn it as one. It's kind of like a ovalic shape. So, I don't think that's even a word, but we'll need an integral for this. So, 0 to 5. We are taking this from 0 to 5. So, the beams are from 0 to 5. So, x squared with respect to x, of course. And by the way, dx, you know, is the change between 1 to uh, 0 to 5. So, the change in thickness. Remember, if you like it, then you should have put it. Oops. They caught me. Oops. But anyway, how to integrate? Calculating. Calculating. Reverse power rule using. All right. And that would be x cubed over 3. But still, warning, warning, not Maxwell equation part one, but we, the thing is, our limit had now become a bound. We now have the bound, so we need to <coughs> integrate over a certain range, remember. So, we've already gotten the sum of all of these. Now, all we need to do is just integrate over a range. Crap, <laughs> um, didn't fully erase the x there, oops. And then you subtract that from 0 over 3, which is 0. Uh, oops. Which is 125 over 3. Sorry. So 125 over 3 minus 0 is exactly that. 125 over 3, which is calculating, calculating, calculating. 41.67. <laughs> 
I think that's correct according to my calculate. We will cover, ugh, get away from me, the volume integral, which is thankfully not a normal integral. All right. So, what is the volume integral? And why does it have three area integrals? Well, that's one for each dimension. Our respects to all of them. I know most of you people out there will start pressing F to pay respects, but no, no. You have to actually do it like this in calculus. So, this is the change in Z over the change in Y over the change in X. And uh, let's actually say that we have a sphere. We want to find the volume of a sphere. Now, how would we do that? Seems you guys didn't give any answers? Well, I'll put it up myself. 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we're trying to derive that here. And now let's say we want to find the volume of the sphere with the radius 4. Now this would give us about 268.1 uh, units, square units or something, when we, uh, when we put all the calculations out. But, but, we want to do an integrate way. So, remember how somebody came up with this. They had to integrate by hand. But thankfully, it's no longer the 18th century. And now, we can just party while everybody else does the work for us. So, anyway, this is what we have so far. But what do we put on the area integrals? The area integrals. Phew. Well, what we put on the area integrals is not a ring. Uh, uh, because I don't like normie integrals. <laughs> Hate them. But anyway, what we do put on them, if it's not a ring, is three-dimensional coordinate plane. <gasps> oh my god! Now, what would normally look like this has been shattered. Now, we have another dimension. Straight in a line. All right, so those are the negative coordinates, and now let's draw a big boy sphere. So where is big boy sphere? Um, well, that's a good question, and here comes your answer. It's right smack dab in the center, zero comma zero, baby. Perfect circle. I hate trying to draw a perfect circle. You know what? Just, uh, just say it already. All right. So, let's say, 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 anybody hear this clip, 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 and we're done. All right. So, and we're done. Yay. And now, what do we do here? Well, let's say, first, we want to go in the Z direction for well, let's say, we, let's say we want our bounds with the z direction, because z ranges from here to here. It changes from here to here. There is a change in z. That's dz. Duh! That's not a full drum roll for your information. So, anyway, what is this top thing? Well, to do that, we take the equation of a sphere and then solve for z. Um, we know that r squared, since we have a radius of 4, is 16. And so, well, the funny thing is, we know how much x is. Because since it reaches out in 4 in all directions, hmm, x must be 4 and minus 4, isn't it? And yeah, now we think it. Now we think it. And so, that means that x is equal to, well, on this side, Let's make this a normie integral. Don't worry, don't worry. We'll change the normie soon. Oh, phew, phew. 15 seconds did the normies exist. Minus 4 for the lower bound and 4 for the upper bound. Alright. And now, let's look at inside the sphere again. And let's solve for z here. z squared equals to 16 minus x squared minus y squared square root we get 16 minus x squared minus oh my freaking god all right and so now that's the upper bound 
But what about DeLorean? DeLorean must be negative the same thing, minus one times the same thing, since it's aimed at the center. The center of the sphere is at zero, zero. Which means that you get minus square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared. All right. And now that gives us the bounds here. Now, Let's erase this normie integral. Let's prepare for how much time we'll have until it, uh, the normie integral turns. So that means that, okay, um, I think we are good. Three, two, one, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. Okay, shoot, shoot. All right, now we can finally integrate in peace because it's no longer a normie integral. Alright, and now what about y? That's the mystery, isn't it now? Uh -huh. Alright, so y is a mystery. But why is y a mystery? Why? See? Wordplay, wordplay, wordplay. I wordplayed you out. Word. <laughs> Put it away. And now, what is y? Why is y such a mystery? Why? Well, x squared plus y squared equals 16. We just kidnap and eliminate z squared. Just like Stalin did to his political opponents, we eliminate z squared. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we get y squared equals 16 minus x squared. And so, <laughs> We get 16 minus x squared. Now if you're wondering how we got x, what we do is y is another political opponent of Stalin. Just eliminate y. Take it away. <laughs> All right, now, <gasps> normie integral. Normie integral spotted. Okay, okay, we have some time. So this in mind is okay. Normie integral has been neutralized. This must be minus 16 minus x squared because of the rule we explored with the z's, then this must be the same thing but positive. And finally, we've got it, boys! That's the volume integral, and when fully integrated, don't tell me I won't bother to freaking do this by hand, because somebody already did it for me in the 18th century. Yeah. But anyway, after we integrate that, which is boring, we get the same answer, 268.1. Yay! Anyway, that's how we find this. This is how we find volume. But now, volume, we've crossed that off the list. I think that's a bit too thin. Cross that off the list, and now, only one political opponent of Stalin to go. Yeah! All right, now time to eliminate the surface integral, which thankfully is not a normie integral, so it's not a political opponent of Stalin anymore. To Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.